we have uh, Charles Clark from City UK. Uh, and we're going to start with Charles. So Charles, over to you. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, my name is Charles. Uh, I am uh, an associate professor uh, in cybersecurity at the University of Roehampton. Um, I'm also a course designer, course leader for uh, the new undergraduate and also the MSc cybersecurity programs. Um, I recently designed our NCSE validated cybersecurity program, uh, which is provisionally val uh, validated. And prior to being at the University of Roehampton, uh, I was at Kingston University for five and a half years, uh, where I grew and ran a, a very successful um, undergraduate uh, so, uh, uh, program in uh, digital forensics and cybersecurity. Uh, I'm an assessor on the, the NCSC certified degrees panels and also on the ACSE panels. Uh, I chaired their first uh, inaugural cybersecurity schools panels. Uh, I'm a co-founder of City UK, so I'm wearing that hat today, but also wearing uh, sort of the, the academia hat as well. Um, and in terms of City, I think uh, Jeff had a really interesting question was that he couldn't find out what City stood for. Uh, it's short for the Colloquium for Information System Security Education. So if you skip along a few slides, uh, Jeff, uh, pass that one and to the next one. So um, CCUK UK uh, is uh, effectively a, a collaborative um, cyber security education community group. Uh, we work with lots of uh, institutions, uh, academic institutions, institutions across the UK as part of um, cyber security education ecosystem uh, as championed by uh, NCSC. Uh, and we are supported by NCSE as well. Um, so if we go to the next slide, um, so there's that typical triad of um, government, industry, and academia. So you need the next one. Uh, but also within this ecosystem, we've got professional associations. If you go to the next one, uh, standards organizations. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to run my slide so I've got my narrative in front of me. Um, community organizations, which we are part of. And then, of course, the last one is certifica uh, certification organizations. So I guess, um, what do we do? So conferences, um, we uh, run workshops, boot camps. Uh, and the key thing that we are really focusing on at the moment and where we're really getting most of our activity centers around something called the Cybersecurity Education Problem Book. Um, it was originally inspired by the uh, Cybersecurity Research Problem Book that NCSC hosts, um, but we wanted to do something slightly different. We wanted to do something that was a lot more uh, interactive, something that was a lot more um, driven by impacts rather than sort of discussing and talking about issues. We wanted to do things that would actually make a real difference. Um, if you go to the next page, uh, one of the, I'll, I'll do, uh, give a quick example of uh, what a problem book is. So the problem book itself is a virtualized collaborative platform. Um, it's for ideation and ideally uh, solving problems. And typically within um, one of the challenges we have in uh, cybersecurity education, as I'm sure Wace, who I met some time ago, will know and can champion as well as Nigel, um, is that um, we tend to end up with situations where uh, we've got lots of isolated conversations, but really we need to have that collaborative narrative uh, in terms of how we might um, impact uh, cybersecurity education on a much broader scale. Um, so I'm going to give a really simple example. Um, if you go down to the very bottom of the next one, you can go beyond that one. Uh, I'm going to give a simple exa example. So we've got, uh, I think, it's seven problem books at the moment, or so seven problem book projects, I should say. Uh, one of them centers around the idea of uh, work readiness of students. Um, so being on the sort of the front line in the coalface of um, meeting students when they first come into university, and also seeing what happens once they leave university. Um, it's clear that there are some disconnects, uh, there are definitely some gaps, um, and I suspect that that's having a bit of an impact in terms of uh, the uh, sort of potential success of those that might be leaving to move into cybersecurity careers. So if we look at the first box I've listed there, uh, basically says, you know, recruitment to university cyber and computer science has been successful. So we have had lots of students in. But on the other side of that, um, we've got varied abilities. Um, we've got lots and lots of well-being issues, uh, morale issues, particularly since um, the pandemic. Um, next slide. Uh, so widely acknowledged shortage of cyber specialists. We know about that. Um, 
if we go to employers, a lot of employers want work ready students. And what I'm seeing, not just on my program, but also from um, programs from other institutions is that we hear a sort of a common narrative with students, which is um, not really having the confidence and not feeling quite ready for work and really having no strategy. If we go to the next one. Uh, so students' expectations at the moment, and it's still here. So I've been sort of talking about this for the last three or four years, is that, you know, I get a degree, a degree and I get a job. And in some cases, uh, for those really strong students, that's great. But the reality is, is that particularly in cyber, it's not, if you're going into sort of um, socks, places like that, then, you know, it could be a first tier move. But for quite often, it's a second or third tier move for many. Um, social mobility opportunities are far more extensive. That's a huge positive. But what we're now seeing is that some students are paying a lot of money. Um, they're accumulating long-term debt. So then you've got to think about, you know, is there a value um, on, uh, uh, is there a, a good return on the value that they've actually, of the time they've uh, invested in the degrees that they're trying to acquire. And next slide. Um, so typically with students, the thing that I see really as a really common thing is that there's no employability strategy. Um, they also have a one CV approach to rule them all. Um, limited commitment to evidence and skills, another big challenge. Uh, Title-centric job searches, so they look for titles rather than actually looking at perhaps the, uh, the requirements that jobs might want. So typically they might look for um, term stock analysts, but they'll miss all of the technologies they might have an opportunity for uh, studying and learning about, which might give them a much broader scope. Um, in terms of my slides in terms of um other challenges a lot of students struggle in terms of the uh, emotions that related to uh, job rejections you know they're, they're, a lot of them aren't geared to managing that um when they realize that a degree is not enough on its own um that that undermines a lot of confidence uh, confusion over what they should learn what skills they might learn um and what te technology they might learn um, and also a lot of them find uh, searching for jobs overwhelming. So we did it, we actually did research on this. So um, annually we do a, a research of uh, students that attend a uh, CIS UK event and we, we capture all of this. So these are the things that come up. And uh, fundamentally where that leads to is that um, students end up being um, either anxious, uh, grumpy, um, or uh, very upset. And this is something we see a lot of. So the reason I mentioned all of that is this is the, the environment in which um, our sort of talent pools are coming from within a lot of universities across the UK. And so the problem book was looking at, well, how do we mitigate and address a lot of those confidence issues of students that, that um, are lacking the confidence in terms of the skills they're acquiring whilst they're at university um, and also lacking that sort of strategy going forward. Um, so next slide, if that's right, Jeff. Um, so what we did, so CCK last year, July, sorry, this year, July through to September, we ran uh, something called uh, an internship project. Um, so Kingston University, um, who I still have a connection with, uh, had nine students uh, that all took part um, in um, a live project, right? So this project was defined by uh, academics and they were real uh, they were building up building applications and it was real these were real applications that students that, that the university required and so they were basically put to work and um, they were collaborative um, they were practical projects uh, they had a duration of 12 weeks um, and Sissy's role in this was basically as a, an observer and once the students are, an observer and a validator but once the students are actually completed um, their internship projects. Uh, we then gave them a, a recommendation post on LinkedIn, but we put them through the mill and they jumped through um, you know, a lot of hoops uh, to actually complete the uh, program successfully. Um, in terms of next steps, um, we're going to repeat this again. Um, so this is the, we did a pilot uh, last year. We'll, we'll do this again over the summer. But some of the challenges that we're facing in terms of how we want to sort of expand this out and really uh, bring in that authenticity is to elicit projects from industry. Um, we've got, you know, projects coming out of areas from academia. Um, we get projects from government, but we really need more from industry. Um, we're really interested to hear about recruitment issues that organizations might have and how we might be able to try and mitigate and work towards challenging some of those issues 
uh, particularly if you know we can work with students uh, on a live basis. Um, and the other key point is is that employability within universities is now is now a key performance indicator. Um, so one thing we are looking at and have started into work on is embedding some of these activities into uh, courses. Uh, across a number of universities. So I'm working there with Abate and University of Western England on this at the moment. Um, and that is it.